Hey, Jackass, where's my DoorDash? I don't know. DoorDash had a problem. As their cloud-native environment scaled and developers delivered new features, their monitoring system did what monitoring systems do and kept breaking down. In an organization where data is used to make better decisions about technology and about the business, losing observability means the entire company loses their competitive edge. With Chronosphere, DoorDash is no longer losing visibility into their application suite. What's the key? Chronosphere is an open source, compatible, scalable, and reliable observability solution that gives the observability lead at DoorDash business confidence and peace of mind. To learn more, read the full success story at snark.cloud slash chronosphere success. Google Cloud and AWS have recently released carbon usage reports for your cloud resources. Yay! This is a great thing, and I applaud both providers for putting a focus onto sustainability where it belongs. It's always a good idea to make people aware of things that they do that might impact the environment. And for companies, those conversations about carbon footprints don't come without risk. After all, it didn't land super well when BP asked Americans to consider their impact on carbon emissions. Pot, meet Kettle, who just got back from a long day drilling for fossil fuels to sell across the globe. I'm sure the two of you would love to discuss your impact on greenhouse gases together. I don't believe that this kind of blame shifting or greenwashing is what either Google Cloud or AWS is doing with their carbon footprint tools but it's a risk they're clearly aware of and trying to avoid. That said, good intentions are nowhere near enough here. Unfortunately, between Google Cloud and AWS, there is a clear winner when it comes to their carbon neutrality efforts. A tremendous amount of the cloud's carbon footprint is the direct responsibility of the cloud provider. But as a tree-hugging do-gooder myself, which cloud provider is going to help me do my part to make the world a little greener? Obviously, I need to explore both of them. Let's start with Google Cloud's carbon footprint page. I'm greeted by a whole mess of dashboards with all kinds of data. Now, I don't run a whole lot of workloads in this cloud, so you can see that my annual carbon footprint works out to two kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent. When I click into the AWS console and type carbon into the Omni search bar at the top, the first result is a blog post that Jeff Barr wrote in March of 2022. Helpful. If I want to get to the actual tool, I can follow the links in that post. Alternately, I can follow the oh-so-convenient path of going to the billing dashboard, clicking into the cost and usage report section, scrolling down, and expanding the apparently collapsed by default customer carbon footprint tool to display your account's usage. Cool. Naturally, because multiple AWS service teams have contributed to this tool, the UX is totally jacked. It's wildly unclear to me exactly what this usage is showing. My best guess is that it says that my carbon footprint has been 0.4 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent between January of 2020 and April 2022. So I can see that I've produced two kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent through Google Cloud and me 0.4 metric tons through AWS, but who the hell knows at this point? In Google Cloud, despite the fact that my carbon dioxide equivalent output is basically nothing, I can see what drives my usage along axes of per month, per region, per billable project in Google Cloud, and per Google Cloud service that I use. In AWS, this useless graph flatlines at zero since it apparently isn't calibrated for carbon emissions at this small of a scale. It further helpfully points out that 100% of my carbon emissions have been driven by the service Other. Ah, uh, I remember fondly the long hours I put in as a young developer working on AWS Other. I suppose there's a way to make this tool less useful, but at this point, I don't know what that might possibly be. What I love about the carbon footprint breakdown by Google Cloud's service that I use is that it gives me a rather special angle into a significant portion that contributes to its per service margins. The downside of increased transparency for Google is the increased visibility into cost drivers, not just for me, but for its competitors. But Google's made it pretty clear that this is a trade-off that it's willing to make in the name of sustainability. 
AWS clearly biases away from transparency to the point that this report basically looks like the climate equivalent of someone had to check a compliance box for installing malware scanning everywhere, so they installed ClamAV on all of their servers, didn't bother to configure it at all, and then just checked the box on the form. Google Cloud makes it easy to spin up a service in regions with the lowest carbon impact with stupid proof little green leaves next to the low CO2 locations. The documentation for the sustainability pillar of the AWS well-architected framework, on the other hand, suggests that you choose regions near Amazon renewable energy projects and regions where the grid has a published carbon intensity that is lower than other locations or regions. Okay, what are those regions? Who knows? AWS offers no maps or listings that I can find that tell you what they are. On a larger scale, Google Cloud is already at 100% carbon neutrality, apparently via offsets and a few other accounting approaches, with a stated goal to move to 100% renewable energy for all of their cloud regions by 2030. Meanwhile, AWS's stated goal of reaching 100% renewable energy usage by 2025 which, good for them, does seem like a joke when you hold it up next to the embarrassment of its carbon footprint tool. The bottom line here is that one of these carbon neutrality approaches is indicative of a thoughtful approach to partnering with customers to lead to a better climate story around cloud usage. The other appears to have been phoned in the night before it was due. By clowns. This isn't even a competition at this point. If you want to slice and dice the impact of your workloads on the environment to make greener choices, there's only one cloud provider that can help you do that, and it's not AWS. Ultimately, if you're moving a workload to the cloud, any cloud, you're going to improve your carbon footprint off of anything you can achieve in your data centers. That's not even up for debate. It is obvious. But in the meantime, I'm waiting for cloud providers to aggressively compete on sustainability rather than seeding the efforts entirely to one contender.